Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Run Iowa podcast. This is episode 108. I'm Rob Lindquist. And I'm Dave Kading. And in this episode, we're going to give you more gift ideas because we're in the giving mood, but yes, this time we are. with a different twist. Yes. And we're going to talk uh, with Jody Seminel, uh, yep. the most recent winner, female winner of Hitchcock 100. I'm just going to say winner because she's yeah. done it three times in a row now. Uh, so we're going to talk with her about all things ultra running and, and her life and career. So that's awesome. Yeah. And then more of the weeks. And uh, that's going to be this episode. Sounds like a great show. Sounds like an awesome show. All right, man. We'll be back right after this on the Run Iowa Podcast. All right, Dave. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, how's the running going? Good. Good? Yeah. You're, you're hitting it a couple, every couple times a week, three times a week? Yeah, about three times a week. Ryan's going. doing his uh, training. Yep. He's getting he, ready. He's training, and so we've been running. I ran. We did... Uh, Nine and a half, or just shy of ten, Sunday morning. Nice. So I saw you guys. We were on a group text. We yep. got four guys in this group text. I didn't even respond. Yeah, because no, I, I it was, was sick. A, it was a good. Run. It was a real nice morning to run. Nice. It was. You know, it was one of those mornings we got up and he said, "Hey, do you want to run this?" And we meet down at Exarbin yeah. here in, in Omaha, and because there's a nice trail, a nine and a half. It's you can part do, of the market to market yep. trail. Um, parts of it, yeah, and then yeah. we loop around and, and hit. You only have to run one section of city streets. So nice. okay. you do about three three miles out of that nine is on streets. All the rest is trails. So it's, nice. it's a real enjoyable run. Anyway, it was like anything else. You get up and like, how are you feeling? Uh, yeah. Sunday morning, kind of had a rough <laughs> Friday or Saturday. Right. Well, let's just start running and see where we go. And we got into it about the point where I was ready to turn around. Ryan right. goes, hey, yeah, let's just do the whole thing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, I just left my water back right. in my truck. It was fine. We ran. The nice thing is we run by his house. Sure. Yeah. So we can stop and get water or whatever. So, yeah, no, it was it was running. It's going well. Nice. And I'm, yourself? I'm on about a once a week right? kind of run. And it's just weird, you know, like I said, life and things happening right now around the holidays. And I, I will say I am... I can easily knock out a 5K. I don't think I have any issues with a 5K. I could probably go easier, longer, no problem. Okay. But I'm, but I'm hitting my 5Ks at about, depending on if I'm running with somebody, about 8.30 to 8.50 pace. If I'm running with people, it might be 9.20, somewhere around there. Right. Um, and so it, it's not horrible, and I'm pretty happy with where I'm at, although I'd love to be running more. Right. I f- found out last week, I didn't find out, but... On my pad of my right foot, up on the front by my pinky toe, it's kind of sore. Okay. And it's it's not a, like, hurts real bad kind of deal, but it's one of those things where if I'm standing barefoot on a hard floor and I put a little pressure on it, I'm like, oh. You got a sore spot. Got a sore spot. So it, it's not stopping me from running or anything, but it's there, and I'm, I'm very cognizant of it right now. So it's something to watch for. Yeah, <laughs> And I'm absolutely. sure our podcast listeners are like, well, shut yeah, up. <laughs> right. You're a puss. <laughs> right. So whatever. Uh, so that's going for me right now. But we're going to do something a little different. Last uh, podcast, we gave you running gifts for people. Right. And we are the Run Iowa podcast. So this episode, we're going to give you Iowa gifts. Yeah, that sounds like a, what a fun time. What a great idea. So yep. we're going to go every other. Do you want to start or do you want me to? I, I've got one. If All you right, you go right ahead. So if you're looking for a, a gift for an Iowan or anybody else, oh, okay. we're going with an Iowa gift. Okay. You need to look up Clayton Ridge Farm Meat Market and Gift Shop. It Ooh. is in... Meat Market, De, huh? Yep, it's in Dubuque, um, uh, near north of Dubuque in Gutenberg, Iowa. Yep. And it is just a historic building, but they have a cafe there, and they sell a whole bunch of um, homemade local salsas and, oh, and nice. jams and all this t- stuff. And all of our can, DRC friends, yep. let us know how that is. Yep, so you can look them up. Um, we'll, we'll put a link to, to where you can find their stuff. And anyway, it looks – that's one of my favorite things. Um, we don't go to, to uh, the – farmer's market very often right. but if i'm in a supermarket or a local grocery store and they have local made stuff salsas and all that i always buy it because it's the best stuff yeah and that's so here you go you can check out clayton ridge farm there you go all right i'm gonna go a little off base a little bit um one of my high school friends became an she's an artist and she's from iowa obviously she okay. went to iowa state she moved out to chicago recently so it's, it's a little off kind of like you said but you can find all of her stuff online and she does art for medical purposes, like oh, medical right. textbooks yep. and stuff like that. 
And so she has a company or a little shop on Etsy. Uh, you can look it up. It's called Anatomical Element. And it, she makes handmade jewelry with uh, inspirational words and things like that. But it's in the shapes of the anatomical heart and lungs and, and things like that. And it's beautiful jewelry. And she does a magnific- magnificent job. Her name is Rachel. Um, uh, go check it out, anatomicalelement.com. Uh, I know that she's in Chicago now, so I'm even going off a little bit on our on our gifts. Uh, but you can check it out and support her. And she does, like I said, I've got my wife a couple things from her before. We got a little pin that says breathe in its lungs. Um, and, and then a heart or an Iowa that says uh, love in it, like the shape of Iowa. But she does a great job. It's all handmade jewelry. Um, she does little shows and stuff in Chicago now, too. So uh, any success she can get is, is awesome. Uh, check it out, Anatomical Elements. That's awesome. Um, so for my second one, since we stay with the Iowa thing here. <laughs> yeah, Iowa thing. Um, yeah. A great gift, for, especially for people who like to travel, okay. is the Honey Creek Resort over by Lake Rathburn. Okay. It's a state park. It wasn't originally a state park. It was built by some private entrepreneurs that couldn't keep it funded. So the state <laughs> took it over, I yeah. think, is the history of it. Okay. It has a beautiful golf course, and they have cabins. Oh. So you can... Hop online now and book yourself a bed and breakfast package at uh, Honey Creek uh, Resorts for the sometime in the summer. So this is a gift that gives twice. Nice. You get to give it for for Christmas and then use it in the summertime or get spring. Golf. Take your family. They have a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so if you do the bed and breakfast package, it has a daily breakfast for two adults and two children, and it has water sports and all this stuff. It's a beautiful facility, and it would be a lot of fun. Awesome. Rob. There you go. All right, my turn. My next one. Uh, have you seen, Dave, the crafty... Uh, oh, no, I forgot the name of it. The uh, wood pallets. Yes. Okay. There are... You can... This is I, this is just an idea. But there are uh, wood pallet creators everywhere in Iowa. So find your favorite one and have them create for you, out of a wood pallet, a bib or... Um, uh, metal sorry i'm drawing a huge yeah. blank uh bib or metal display for you and That's they can cool. do them out of the out of the pallets and i've seen there are hundreds of different designs so i'm trying to be as generic as possible don't like right. one specific one for this because you never know you you can get what you like but it's an idea for you uh find a pallet maker or a builder or somebody that does this for fun and and get a, either a bib display or a metal display for your running gear that is cool yeah um i have two pallets for sale right hey, now there you go. somebody wants one <laughs> um yeah you know there's a lot of cool things and um yeah you know that you can do a lot of stuff you can do pallets. a lot of stuff with the pallets i saw now. somebody who had their whole it was a kind of a bachelor pad sure but they, all their furniture was made out of pallets oh really it was really cool and and the neat part is too especially with that or even the idea of that is you there are so many good makers in iowa that will take wood things and and almost everybody can do it now almost you have to have some talent but um i you know it's it's not a it's something you can find easily that's and, cool. and so just do a, a quick search or you probably everybody out there that's listening all 12 of you um probably know somebody already that right. can create it so have them do something for a significant other or yourself or, or whatever um whether it's running related or not that's cool all right and for my final one um it's a book and it is the 50 greatest plays for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hey, there you go. And as Kirk Ferentz wrote the foreword and that, um, so I'm recommending that. I was going to recommend the one for the Iowa State, but it's going to take another 50 years right, before right. they have 50 time. greatest plays. Hey, we're going bowling, man. So, um, <laughs> no, so there you go for your, your Hawkeye fan, 50 greatest plays for the Iowa Hawkeyes football. Um, it looks like a pretty good read. There you if go. you're an Iowa fan. Well, because you went Iowa on the left. We didn't plan this, by the way. But because you went Iowa, I'm going to go Iowa State. Sorry, you and I and Drake people. Uh, I'm going to go with... Those are schools? Uh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with the easy one for me, bowl tickets, right? If if this is a football thing and, and if you're going bowling, whether to Iowa's bowl game in New York for the Pinstripe Bowl or Iowa State's game in Memphis, uh, come say hi to me. Um, we'll be there, but go bowling with your family. Uh, we're taking our whole family. We're going to road trip to Memphis. And so cool. I, it might be a little short notice. I know that the, 
Iowa State tickets are sold out like the their allotted right. amount is, but there are other tickets they're getting as right. well. Um, tickets are relatively cheap. They're like 65 bucks or something oh, like that's that. Oh, not bad. And uh, it's a road trip. It's a nine-hour drive for Iowa State. I know New York for Iowa fans. But, hey, about seven, eight years ago, Iowa State went out to New York for the pinstripe right. boat. Um, and so it is a trip you can make. Right. But it's a it's a cool family experience, and if you've never been to a bowl game, it's so a cool So all five of you driving out? Yeah, all five. And so. um, you have lodging and everything taken care of? Lodging is done. We did, we're did. we Hotwire fans. Yep. We love the Hotwire thing. And yep. We've never had a bad experience with it. Okay. And uh, we've done Chicago and Houston and yep. stuff. And so Memphis, we were a little like, eh, I'm not so just, sure. But hot, hot wire is the one where you say this is kind of the time frame and it. No, hot wire is the one where you say I want like a four star hotel in this area of town. Right. And they have them kind of sectioned off. And until you hit by, you don't know exactly well, what, what hotel. You're right. And they do that with flights, too. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of do. It. Yeah, we've only done the hotel. Yeah. Though. Laura's flying. This is a side note, I guess. Sure, so, yeah. <laughs> um, she's flying up to New York um, tomorrow. OK. Her her aunt. It's her 70th birthday, so she's surprising her and flying oh, up there. And surprise! We did, and we did it that way. Um, and she's, yeah, she, so she didn't really know. Right. So she's got like a 5 a.m. flight oh, tomorrow geez. morning. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Had a lot of good barbecue down in Memphis. That's, I'm looking forward to barbecue. We're going to do the, the Graceland thing, too. Oh, sweet. So kind of looking forward. I'm not a huge Elvis fan. I know yeah. I may, I'm out of that generation a right. little bit, yeah. so I'm not a huge Elvis fan. But it'll still be cool to yeah, know. Yeah, you see, you've only do the probably, Street if stuff. you have any Elvis memories, is big, fat, bloated Elvis. And, and even that I don't really remember. It's more like Grandma and Grandpa watched some of right. his old movies. And, you right. know, I Blue, Blue Christmas, I yeah. love that one. So. Uh, so, okay, to recap real quick, Rob's Gifts, uh, anatomical elements, awesome handmade jewelry, uh, and anatomically correct. Uh, we have palette creations and right. then bowl tickets. Yeah, and so for mine, we have shop local, buy the goods. Um, we have the meat market. Yep. Um, then, geez, I'm going to draw a blank. What did I do second? Oh, um, <laughs> Honey Creek Resort. Yep. And book yourself something for the summer, take the family, and then the last is the 50 greatest plays, the Iowa Hawkeyes. There you go. That's what we got. Those are your Iowa gift ideas for this uh, this holiday season. Yes. Sounds like fun. Cool. We'll be back right after this. We're going to talk with Jody Seminella, and we're going to talk to her about all sorts of cool stuff, uh, ultra running related, how she got started, tips and tricks, all that kind of cool thing. Uh, because, you know, good talkers and good people have good stories, and we yep. like that. So we'll be back right after this. This is episode 108 of the Run Iowa podcast. And welcome back to the Run Iowa podcast. On the line with us now is Jody Seminel, the most recent winner of the yes, Hitchcock 100 here in Council Bluffs area. Uh, hi, Jody. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing, doing well. wonderful. It's a it's a beautiful uh, Wednesday morning right now that we're recording this, and this weather for December is crazy. Um, and and I want to talk a little bit about Hitchcock. But Dave and I a couple years ago volunteered at Hitchcock, and it was absolutely freezing. Uh, what, <laughs> what was the weather like for you this past Saturday when you were running it? You know, it actually wasn't too bad. It was um, anywhere between probably the 20s and the 30s. Uh, there were a few spots out at Hitchcock where the wind was a little brutal, mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't horrible. I mean, as long as you were moving and staying warm, it wasn't too bad. You know, that's one of the weird things about runners and especially runners in Iowa. Like 20 degrees is not that bad. You go to right. California or something, they're <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about? But Yeah. And that's kind of the, uh, it's, yeah, you don't know what you're going to get when you register for a race in December <laughs> in Absolutely. Iowa. And Absolutely. that's probably one of the people that one of the things that people probably worry about is what's the weather going to do in December. Sure, <laughs> sure. Well, let's talk about a little bit about your running history, really, how you got started and, and what got you into ultras. And we'll kind of move from there. So we're, what's your what's your history? Sure. Um, well, I ran my first half marathon in 2011 um, and I was just kind of a middle of the packer. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was also a smoker. I was a smoker for 25 years. Um, in fact, I recall after I ran my first half marathon, um, I had some other friends that were walking it. So they were going to be another hour or two behind me. Sure. I remember sitting at the car. I still had my bib on smoking a cigarette. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and people would walk by and go, Oh my gosh, look at her. Um, and then later that year, in 2011, um, my biological father actually passed away of lung cancer mm. at the age of 60. So very young. Sure. 
Um, so after that happened, I decided I'm going to quit. I'm going to make some changes. So in 2012, I ran my first full marathon and I, again, was a middle of the packer, you know, 430, 445 was about my average time for my marathon. Mm -hmm. Um, did that for a couple years and then ended up with my first injury, my first stress fracture. Oh no. Um, so I was out for a long time. I was out for seven months. Holy cow. And then, yeah, it was a bad one. And then when I came back, my doctor said, you know what? You should probably start running trails. Trails are good uh, for older runners like you. Right. Because then, you know, I was in my early 40s. So I'm like, I don't want to run trails. That's dirty. It's, you know, that's not fun. So I uh, ended up registering for this 50 mile race on the dirt at Hitchcock in Iowa. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm from Iowa. I actually uh, went to high school in Sloan, Iowa. I oh, okay. uh, lived in Salix. And it's very flat there. Mm -hmm. So when I signed up for this 50-mile race at Hitchcock, I was picturing, you know, pastures and cornfields. <laughs> you know, probably what most people think of when they think of Iowa. Right, right. right. So... <laughs> Time went on, and, you know, I think I registered in April, and then it was like uh, May, June, July, and I ran across some runners at Lake Zerinsky, and they were talking about this 50-mile race they were doing in Colorado, and I said, that's great, I'm doing this 50-mile race over in Iowa, I can't remember what it's called, it's in December, and they're like, oh my gosh, that's that's Hitchcock. I said, yeah, 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 that sounds right. And I said, you, have you been out there yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. Like, oh, you need to go out there and see what you're in for. So I went out there, I don't know, a month later, and oh my gosh, I had no idea we had something like that here that was right. so difficult. Right. So I I completely regretted signing up for this race. <laughs> I thought, oh my God, this is crazy. This is dumb. I can't run out 50 miles out there. That's insane. So I started running out there more. I went out there a couple times a week, and then I started talking to other runners that were also doing the race, and, and they were doing the 100-mile distance, right. which, in my mind, I couldn't even comprehend. How sure. can somebody run 100 miles out here? Right. Sorry about that. Our bell there. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so um, time went on, and I started thinking, you know what? I have a pretty distinct advantage over other runners around here because I'm running out here a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's people that are signed up for this race that have never run here. Right. Maybe I should try the 100. So it was probably two weeks before the actual race. I made the switch from the 50 mile to the 100 mile That's distance. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what to pack. I didn't know what a drop bag was. I didn't know what crew did. I didn't know you needed a pacer. Um, and being new to trail running, I didn't know that many people. Sure. So I actually asked um, a friend of mine that was also a road runner to pace me a loop. Um, and he agreed to. And then later that day, and he said, you know what? I'll run all 50 miles with you. And he'd never ran more than a marathon either. Sure. So we went out there and. Oops, sorry again. <laughs> that's okay. So uh, that, that was 2015. Um, so I ran my first 100 mile race in 2015. And it was so muddy that year. Um, I mean, we were all just covered in mud yep. it was insane i mean it was the kind of mud where you just sat on your butt and you yeah. just slid down the hill right. we worked that grabbed one. on yes so you grabbed onto the branches and the trees the grass anything you could to get back up the hills and it was insane it was a complete mud fest but right. it was so much fun <laughs> so much fun um and the following year i you know of course i thought okay i'm gonna do this again i think i can do a little better because it sure as heck can't be muddy this go around so in 2016 i decided to do it again um and there was no mud but we did have snow right so the first couple loops in 2016 we had to deal with the snow and it, again it was slick the same thing you sit on your butt on your way down and you grab things pull yourself up on the way up um so i thought i was going to retire after <laughs> two years <laughs> But then, it, I mean, it's such a fun race, such an enjoyable experience. The volunteers are wonderful. The race directors are incredible. So I decided to go for it again and said, okay, well, this time I'm going to have a goal. Let's do this in under 24 hours. So I had a plan in place. I had my pacer set up. I had the crew set up. I was ready to go. When the pacer was injured, he was dealing with an Achilles issue. Oh, no, okay. And then my... Um, 
crew, his mom ended up having surgery, so he wasn't able to come. So the, like two weeks, week or two before the race, I'm scrambling to find another race pacer, scrambling to find someone to help me, you know, try and get this sub 24 goal. Right. Um, but I mean, the goats community, the greater Omaha area trail runners, I, I mean, it didn't take me long to right. find somebody to, to fill in last minute and, and help me finish this race last weekend in under 24 hours. And that's that was, amazing. That was your third win in, in three races, uh, three yeah. in a row. Yep. So yeah. Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. You're kind of the, the queen, the, the queen of Hitchcock now, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know about that, but you know what? I did tattoo the logo on my leg after the first year. I saw that. I saw (laughs) you on Facebook, um, and that's what I was telling Rob. He said, oh, we got to call Jody and see if she'll talk about it. She won Hitchcock again, and (laughs) you were talking about it, and I saw the tattoo. I'm like, oh, there's somebody who found something that they love. If you yeah. can, you know, and it, what's better, it's not some guy's name that you're going to have to remove <laughs> later in your life or something, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So, yes. so I'm a, let's say I, I, I've run a couple marathons. Dave's run a couple marathons, that sort of thing. Um, what are the next steps for getting ready for an ultra or any 50 miler or even like you said, two weeks before I'm going to switch to a hundred miler <laughs> other than the mindset. What, I guess, what would it be? Is there anything else? You know, it's actually the people you surround your, yourself with. Um, you listen to other people talk at first, it seems absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. And then the more that they talk about it and the more they make it sound so easy, I mean, obviously <laughs> it's not, right. but just listening to people talk and everybody has you know, so many helpful things to say. They want you to succeed. Mm-hmm. They want you to do these crazy things. So they encourage and enable you to do these crazy things. So yeah, it's definitely the people that you surround yourself with. And I will say, go back to the goats again. Mm-hmm. You hang out with the goats for too long, you'll be signing up for an ultra too. Right. <laughs> That's, you know, we, we talk about community on here all the time and, and how much, you know, having that motivation, whether it's external with other people or internal with, you know, your own goals, if it's a time goal or a distance goal or something like that, how important that is. Uh, when you show up to Hitchcock for the first time and you see those hills and, and we've talked about Hitchcock here too as well, uh, what what's that like and, and how do you how do you kind of just really focus in on what you want to accomplish? You know, it's just putting one foot in front of the other and not allowing any negative thoughts to enter your brain. I mean, you know, going into this, it's going to hurt. You know, you're going to feel miserable. It's going to be hard to eat. Your stomach's going to hurt. Your body's going to fight you. But going into that, knowing it's going to happen and just being able to ignore all of those things and keep those thoughts out of your mind really helps. And I've been very fortunate. I, I don't let those thoughts get into my mind. Um, and I know most people do struggle with that. And it's usually about two thirds of the way in, into a race, whether you're running a marathon, it's maybe around mile 16, 17. When you're running 100 miles, it's usually around mile 55 to 65, where those thoughts in your brain thinking, this is dumb. Why did right. I sign up for this? Um, but yeah, just keep those thoughts out and keep yourself positive. Just, you know, distract yourself with music. And if you're fortunate enough to have a pacer, your pacer will help you keep your mind off the, the suck that you're feeling. And yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so how are you feeling today? You know, pretty good. Surprisingly, um, on Monday, because I finished the race early Sunday morning, by Monday, I didn't feel too bad. My legs were still pretty swollen. My feet, my knees were swollen. Uh, but I was not doing the 100-mile shuffle like I had in years <laughs> <Right>. past. <Yeah. laughs> uh, so I was pretty well-trained. I do have a coach, um, and she made sure I was well-trained uh, going into this race. And, and that helps a lot in terms of recovery. Sure. Was this your first year having a coach? It, well, I did have a coach last year um, for Leadville. And because I did attempt lead fill yes, last right, year, but yes. I went into it with a tibial stress fracture. Right. Um, so I did not finish. I DNF'd at mile 60. And I took a few months off um, recovering from injury and then, of course, running Hitchcock again. Earlier this year, I had another stress fracture. In January, I was diagnosed with a stress fracture in my fibula. Well, at that time, I realized I need a coach that also has a clinical background. Sure. 
So I hired a, a different coach who is also a PT. So she really keeps me dialed in on any pains, um, anything that I might be experiencing. Right. To make the decision, okay, no running this week. You're going to go spend, you know, 10, 15 hours on the bike this week. Or you're going to go be doing the, the Stairmaster, um, things like that. So, um, yeah, having a coach definitely makes a world of difference um, when you're my age. Um, to kind of prevent injuries from right. from slowing you down, stopping you completely. That's cool. Uh, I know that in our conversations with uh, other guests that we've had that – several of them, especially ultra runners, that's kind of the point where I'm serious or I'm just doing this for fun is I, I, I find a coach that I can work with and the advantages are like so many, you can't list them all. And that's right. You know, and and we tell anybody and doesn't, you don't have to be uh, the three time champion of Hitchcock (laughs) to have a coach. Anybody can benefit from, from having a coach work with them and, and, be more efficient. Absolutely. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Um, because they, well, they, they take the thought out of it. So you, they just tell you what to do. You go out and do it. Mm -hmm. But then, um, I mean, if you're paying somebody to tell you what to do, you're more likely to do it. Absolutely. (laughs) true. Um, (laughs) and then just being an ultra runner. I mean, the reason you're an ultra runner is because you like to run. And if you just run all the time and do nothing else, you're going to get injured. Right. So that definitely makes a difference. And it also does help improve your speed. Last year when I had a different coach, um, I managed to qualify for Boston and for New York City, whereas prior to me having a coach, you know, I would run and I would do all the speed work, all this stuff on my own, and I could not qualify for either one of those. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can't endorse having a coach enough. It's been great for me. That's cool. Uh, I want to go back to something that I love, uh, food, a little bit. And, <laughs> I, you know, when we generally research guests, we check out their Facebook profiles. And you posted a couple pictures of food on uh, your Facebook with the goats pages. And uh, tell us a little bit about your diet when you're running that 100 miles and, and what kind of thing you'd like to eat the most and, and maybe the least and that sort of thing. Oh, gosh. You know, it is really hard to eat during a 100-mile race. Um <laughs> So what I do is I actually alternate between drinking scratch and taking honey stinger chews. Mm -hmm. I I switch every 30 minutes and then I also take two salt tabs an hour. And then I try really, really hard to grab food off of the aid station tables. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I had maybe half a cup of ramen, um, which was so hard to swallow, but I attempted it. Mm -hmm. Um, half a lemon cookie and I think two bites of a grilled cheese. Oh, wow. That's, that's what I had (laughs) for the whole race. Um, but the scratch and the honey stinger, I mean, it gives me enough energy to keep going, obviously. Um, but it does help if you can get some real food into your system. It's just, it can be really hard to do. Yeah. That's when we were working in 2015, and we worked uh, Sunday morning. Yeah, the Oasis. Yeah, yeah, we were down at the Oasis, and you know, you know and uh-huh. they had to move that because it was such a muddy mess down there. Oh yeah. And yeah. that was one thing that was it was probably a, a pretty profound observation on our part is yeah. how important it was when um, runners were coming in and their pacers and like, okay, what do you need and get and get them the proper hydration and fuel and making sure that it, at least they're attempting to yes. eat because those guys are when we were there you know they were on their last maybe their last loop for the 50 yeah. mile maybe they had two loops left for the 100 mile and they they were not feeling good and yeah and i can geez i can't even imagine i run a marathon and i don't want to eat or drink <laughs> anything at the end <laughs> and you know you're doing that f- almost four times more and and that's just crazy how hard it must be to keep your nutrition and hydration up yeah, it really is. I mean, you're you're jostling your body and the blood flow. I mean, the blood flow is going to your arms and your legs. You have very little blood flow in your stomach to help you digest. Right. So it, it is really hard um, definitely to eat during an ultra. Even, well, as you know, even with the marathon, you know, trying to suck down a goo or yeah. take some chews can be really hard to do. So, yeah, it's a challenge. I, I can't, like I said, <laughs> I can't even imagine it. Because, like, goo, <laughs> goose for me... Uh, they just make me want to hurl immediately. Yeah. They're too the the consistency of them is terrible, 
And obviously that's one of the, my wife would say that's why you end up in the med tent every right. time you run <laughs> um, because you don't do all that stuff and you get sick. But I just can't handle that. Yeah. And actually, um, going back to what you were saying about goose, when I ran it in 2015, that's all I had was oh, goose. Yeah. Because Ooh. being a marathon runner, that's what I right? would use when I ran marathons. So that's what I used when I ran um, 100 miles at Hitchcock. So I probably had, I don't know, 35 packages of goo. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't like goo anymore at all. <laughs> right. They, yeah, they over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm happy Gatorade's come out with a new product that's, it, it's just their, you know, sugar water, but it's a lot thinner. So it's a larger package, and but you're mm-hmm. getting the same caloric intake and but it's a lot easier to get down when you're you're hot and tired um so i i use that and my at i ran chicago in october and um i didn't take enough so i you know i miscalculated what i would need yeah yeah it's it's tough um you know there's so many new products coming out Mm -hmm. every year it seems um and so yeah it's definitely worth trying as much as you can to figure out what right. works best for your body and and what can you do when you're you know two three four hours into a race or you know right. 15 20 um what agrees with you and and what can you keep in <laughs> right and also keeps you moving <laughs> i kind of have a, a two-parter question for the last question for you if that's all right sure. um sure. i i guess what makes hitchcock so likable for you or made you want to come back a third time and then on the same note and it can be related to hitchcock it doesn't have to be but what is like the best thing or, or most memorable thing you've maybe seen while out on a run, a trail run like that, a hundred miler? Oh gosh. Um, well, the draw to Hitchcock would definitely be um, the goats, the volunteers, right. the race directors, and the other runners. Um, seeing other runners out there run their first half marathon, run their first 50 miler, run their first hundred is is so amazing to watch because that was once me i once you know could barely run a mile Mm -hmm. and just knowing how that person feels crossing the finish line because that was me not that long ago right um you know not knowing what they're capable of and they're capable of incredible things and just seeing that and witnessing that it's just so inspiring and and that's the kind of thing that draws me to ultras is just you know the camaraderie and seeing other people set these crazy goals and then achieve those goals or even just attempt those goals is just it's amazing to watch awesome cool Hey, I have one. So what's 2018 have in store for you? Oh, gosh. (laughs) Um, Well, I am running the Boston Marathon again. Okay, Um, good for you. And then I'm doing Bighorn 100 out in Wyoming in June. Um, I am in the Leadville Lottery, which is in August. Right. So that is going to be my determining factor for Hitchcock 2018. Gotcha. Um, if, if If I do get into Leadville... I will do Hitchcock. If I do not get into Leadville, I'm actually going to do Havelina down okay. in Arizona right. because my mom and dad live down there. I oh, sweet. That's a good excuse yeah, to go absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So I'm going to leave it to fate. I'm going to yep. leave it to fate as far as um, Hitchcock 2018. Well, good luck on the lottery yes. then. Thank you. And we appreciate your time. This yes. was awesome. We uh, Congratulations on number three, three yep. and, and possibly number four, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much. It was so insightful. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You bet. <laughs> awesome. Great conversation. We'll get her Facebook information yeah, out absolutely. there as well. Um, so thank you, Jody. Yes. We appreciate that. Uh, and we found out off the air that you and her went to USD together. Yes. Well, kind of together. You graduated yep. a little early, but yep. you kind of know the same people. Right. So that's fun. Yeah. Uh, small world. It I, is. Speaking of a uh, small world and completely unrelated, but in my previous life, before I was a teacher, I worked in insurance. Right. And I'm still friends with some of the people I worked with. One of my former students now has the job I used to have. And I just found that out last night. Really? Yeah. And it knows the same people now. And cool. we saw that through Facebook. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Small yeah. world. Uh, so anyway, that was previous life stuff. Uh, time for the of the weeks, uh, race of the week, tip of the week. I have the race of the week and yes, I'll start you do. unless you want to, but nope, I will. That's All right, cool. Uh, really easy, um, for us this time of year, it's those commitment day five Ks and they're on January 1st. My wife and I are going to do a, 
race in 2018 on every holiday we can. Um, that's feasibly possible. And so we're going to start with a commitment day race. Uh, just find and, and here's the thing, folks, and you guys know this too. There are going to be lots of them out there. Running is still, I think, growing. Yes. Um, especially since we started this podcast, it's Absolutely. been growing. Absolutely. Um, and and it's continuing to go and getting more mainstream, which is awesome. There are races out there everywhere. Do you do want to make sure you're finding good races? We didn't even talk about damn to damn stuff, right? Um, this week's podcast, but we'll get to that. Uh, but there are good races out there for everybody. So find a commitment day 5K. Uh, get your 2018 started right uh, with a good run, whether it's a 5K or a 50K or whatever you want. I'm sure there are commitment day 50Ks. Yeah, I'm sure there <laughs> I is. Would, I would guess there are. Uh, but get out there. Get out with a run with the family. Get out with a run with friends, however you want to do it, even if you're hungover. Right. Because there's a good chance I will be. Um, but but it's good out there, good to get out there, and and any commitment day race to get yourself going and motivated, even in cold Iowa weather. Yes. So I'm not giving you any specifics. You can look at all the regular spots. We check out Active.com all the time, running in the USA, uh, and any local specific races that you can find usually have stuff as well. That's cool. Cool. There you go. Time for the tip. Time for the tip, and today's the 13th, right? All day? Yeah, today's the 13th, so I have the 12 workouts of Christmas. Hey, there you go. Starting go along, starting uh, today. Podcast starts yep. Thursday, so you so got 12 days. There you go. And um, that, it, I'm not going to read through them all. It's 12 sure. different runs. These are the author. This is on active.com. The author is just, hey, runners are creatures of habits, and we get into running the same places, the same yep. tracks, <laughs> doing the same workouts. Yep. And, and Jody mentioned it in... Her conversation is having a coach who does all the thinking for you makes it a lot more enjoyable and you actually get better. And you do other stuff. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, these are like, um, we've all done progressive runs where, you know, you like do 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters. Well, this is, this this author, so he goes, do a point-to-point progression run. Okay. Where you just pick out an arbitrary landmark and you do your sprint to it. So you don't know the distance. So it might not oh. be 100, might be 200, might okay. be 50. And then you pick another landmark and you do that in an out and back fashion okay where it's not measured distance it's kind just, of a fart lick yep. kind of so it sounds pretty cool um i was just looking through him um the, he's like i said he's got 12 um uh, there's like four mile straight and turns tempo runs five by five mile pick a minute fart licks um six by 600 meters trying to max out just several things seven six five four three two one fart licks um uh, he's got that a lot of like cool. My weekend. Yeah, got a lot of cool <laughs> things. So if you want to something change up, spice up your Christmas vacation. There you go. Yeah, um, go to active.com and find the uh, twelve runs of and Christmas. And we'll throw it on our website yes. as well, runiowa.org, which is still active, by the way. Hey, we're still doing that. And if you're yep. thinking of even weirder or more fun gifts, I don't know. That probably wasn't a great description. We do have some merchandise on there, some hats, Absolutely. some gloves. Or not gloves, I'm sorry, shirts, yep. hoodies, that kind of stuff. So if you're thinking about it and you need something desperately, man, you must be desperate. Yes. Check out the Run Iowa gear on runiowa.org. And we'll have this stuff, uh, the tips of the week and race of the week information in our podcast episode guide, which is on that page as well. Sounds great. All right, we're going to wrap things up in just a minute right on the Run Iowa podcast. All right, I'm going to surprise you. We didn't plan this. Okay. Favorite Christmas movie? Favorite Christmas movie. Jeez, I don't know. Christmas Carol. Oh, so you're going classic. Yeah. See, I'm I'm not necessarily... Now, we watch as a family all the old... Right. Like Rudolph and Frosty stuff. As a family, we do that. Yeah. I love Die Hard. That's such a good Christmas movie. (laughs) And there's still the debate. Home Alone would be another one. Right, that's a good one, right? But th- that's the thing. And, and so my wife and I, we rented. She had never seen the whole original Die Hard. She's seen like the TV one, yeah. the cut. And I'm like, oh, you got to watch it at least once. So we rented it the yeah. other night. And, and we watched it. And I was like, oh, this is so good. Like there are so many lines in that movie. And it's a Christmas story. And there's still a debate. Is that a Christmas movie? I'm like, yes. Right. There's no way it's not. But then I thought, and I put this on my own personal poll that when we were watching it. What's better, Die Hard or Lethal Weapon? The original, Ooh, the first one. Right, because that's a it's a Christmas, Christmas movie, movie as well. Yep, yeah. That's tough. It, it now, is. according to my friends on the internet, yeah. Die Hard wins hands down. Really? Now, 
I was kind of the other way because I get it. I was relatively young in the 80s. I was born early 80s. And, yeah. and so when those movies came out, I was still pretty young. But watching the opening cut of Lethal Weapon as a youngster, when I probably shouldn't have been, right. and the young woman falls out of the building and you know after snorting some right. a little detailed, sorry. Watching that, I was immediately drawn to that movie and could not take myself away. Right. Yeah, it's, geez, I don't and know. And it was funny. Die Hard is funny, but not in the same way right. as Lethal Weapon. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're both good. <laughs> they are both good. I like. They I are. knew I threw you off a Jeez, little bit. Jeez, that's yeah. a tough one. Um, well, if you had to choose, Lethal Weapon or Die Hard? Lethal Weapon. Yeah? Yeah. I, 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 as much as I love Lethal Weapon, even after saying that, because I just watched Die Hard, though, I, I got to go back to Die Hard. No, Die Hard's good. Because I just watched it. So... Anyway, yeah. all right. I no, that's you good. Jeez, uh, I'll just watch them both. There you go. The, Nicole and I are going to watch. So we're going to go see Star Wars this week. But yep. before we go see Star Wars, I have to make her watch The Force Awakens again, just so she's back on track. She's right. not a huge Star Wars fan. Right. Um, so, but we now, like today's Wednesday, we're watching <laughs> Lethal Weapon tonight, Star Wars tomorrow, and then Star Wars Friday. Yeah, so, I have to get tickets for Friday. Yeah, yet. it's it's anyway. That's we've. Uh, we do want to make a quick mention here at the end of this podcast. Uh, we are done for 2017 on yes. the podcast. Um, we just have a lot of holiday stuff happening right. with our families and things like that. at The end of the school, so we are done right now, and we will be back the first week of January, uh, or possibly the second week, depends right. on when we get back for school and right. that sort of thing. Um, and so uh, we we are going to take a break. We'll mention that on all of our social media accounts as well. We do appreciate everything you guys did for us in 2017. Absolutely. It was a wonderful year. All the new things that we're getting started. We're still working on our book. Yep. Uh, very slowly, but we are working on it. Yeah, we're working on the cover art right now. <laughs> exactly. The the forward. Uh, but, it, it, you know, that's a goal for 2017 for us, I think, uh, is to get that. Or 2018. I'm sorry. 2018 is. That's one of our goals. Uh, but lots of lots of things we, we plan on. I don't know. I plan on doing the podcast. For a little while longer. Yes, Do you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So didn't put you on the spot there. That would have sucked no. if you said no. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate all you guys. We're thankful for you. We're happy you're around and listening to us uh, ramble on for 108 episodes over the course of three years. Uh, I uh, This is officially three years for us. Right. Because it was winter break three years ago that I sat in my basement and recorded episode zero by myself. Right. And I thought... I can't do this by myself. I need somebody right. with me. Hey, Dave, come right. over. Let's do. Let's be a guest. And you said, eh, "I got nothing better to do." Right. And three day, three years later, still we're still rocking. Yeah. So uh, we appreciate it. A happy 2017. We hope 2018 is great for you. We yes. look forward to being back with you. Anything else for no, you? Absolutely. Yeah. It'll be a good year next year. I agree. All right, folks. Happy, happy trails. trails. Yeah.